Hello and welcome to Stockton Junction. Today's video I'm just going to show you these oil drum packs uh, come in 12 as you can see there that's by model railway scenes um, pretty decent so I'll try and get some focus sorry about this it's not focusing I don't know why that is there we go so as you can see it's got a little rim there it's got the little cap it's got all the rims on the side and they're actually nice nicely done you can really feel those so pretty decent oil drum so if you want oil drums these are a very good set to go for and today what i'm going to do is we're going to do some painting on these uh, so I've got my paint set up, I'm going to do various different colours and then once we've done the colours we'll put some washes etc on as well and change, you know, make them look used and worn. So first of all, because these are going to be a two-tone colour, I'm going to get a smaller brush for this one, two seconds. smaller brush so the first ones I'm going to do are going to be like the shell li li livery so they're going to be in multiple color as stated and obviously this is going to take a while painting these all up but so all we're going to do, just using the Tamiya flat yellow. I prefer the flat paints because they I don't really want a gloss finish. Although it doesn't really matter if you wanted, you could use any paints um, and then maybe give them a matte varnish afterwards to take away the shine. So. Just going to give that a quick first coat. The yellow being a lighter colour takes a bit longer sometimes to go on. But I will say, I'll try and move this camera a little bit just so it can see a bit better. Because obviously I need to paint nearer the edge of the workstation. You can thin your paints down if you want. With a lot of them, I don't tend to bother. I only tend to thin paints down if they're getting really thick in the pot. Or if I do need a thin layers of coat of paint. If I'm building up, like on when you're painting a figure of a person, if you're painting like a jacket or something I find that the thinner paints and things work better and you can also vary the shades slightly as well sometimes then so they're out the way for now I'll leave those to dry while we get on with some of the other ones and we'll discuss what colors I'm going to use. I always have a pot of water here to clean my brush and a nice cloth to wipe the excess paint off. If you ever do use cloths for your brushes, 
don't sit there twisting it like that the best thing to do is to grip the brush like that and pull it backwards as you twist because that way you keep your bristles nice and straight if you act do this sort of movement you're going to bend the bristles and damage your brushes so the next color i'm going to use i don't know if this is a flat color or not um actually change this color actually I might not use that one I'm going to change it for the Humbrol Matte 64 so I don't know why my focus keeps changing all the time on my camera so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two in this color um, we'll do these in part stages because obviously you can't paint the whole thing while holding it although I could do this if I'd use my brain before starting um, I think this is the problem with not being organized sometimes uh, what you can do neat little trick is i've always got blue tack i have a whole drawer with blue tack in so get yourself a paint pot stick a lump of blue tack to the top of the pot first like so make sure it's pressed down nice around the edges but try and keep a big lump then you can get the item you want push it down onto the onto the blue tack like that and then instead of having to paint it in stages, I can just hold it like that. So there was a lesson learned for me. Remember to do this because I normally do do that. So I'm just going to get some more pots. Just setting up a few more quickly. So I should have really done this before we started, but never mind. So I apologize if this video gets a little bit long winded and boring. It will take a while because obviously I've got to cut all the base colours on unless I could always just skip that section. I mean, base colours are the easy bit, I'm sure. But then again, I want to go through all the different colours I'm using and stuff as well. So. Alright, so that's the two grey ones painted up now. I'm going to leave those over there. Close the lid on that one. Uh, so I'm looking now at some old sort of metallic y looking uh, drums. So these two 
I'm going to paint up with a new colour. Uh, where did I put my... Here we go. Because this is a new paint, I've just bought this one. I need to put my uh, ball bearing in. So this is a Tamiya and it's Dark Iron XF64. And as I've shown before in a previous video, whenever I have a new paint, I always put in my ball bearing. It helps when you shake it. It really helps to mix the paint up better. So it's a new colour, this one, that I've not used before. So I thought I would give this a good try. And I thought an old, old iron colour would be really good on these drums. I've looked at some pictures and seen some similar colour. Maybe a little bit of rust to go with these ones. Do you really like that colour? It's pretty good. Obviously it's going to dry slightly different, right? And there we have the next one done there. See, it doesn't take too long at all, especially when they're stuck on like this. So. What I will do is I'm just going to do this video as a big, long one video because when I edit videos, uh, my video editing program is pretty complex. And what it will do is it will send, it takes about two to three hours of rendering time. Once you've put the video together, all the different parts, even if you just chuck the parts together that you videoed and then render it, it takes two or three hours. So by the time I've done that, and then by the time I've uh, done the upload to YouTube as well, it can be quite a long time. So to cut back on that time, actually I really like this colour. I was going to do... Uh, yeah, we're going to do two of, just two of that one. For... So we'll put our paint back on. Now the next paint colour that I'm going to use is actually my own colour that I've mixed. It is a Tamiya XF8 flat blue. But if we look at Tamiya FX8 flat blue and look at mine, you can see I've added some flat white to it to lighten, to make a lighter flat blue. So that I've got the two different tones if I ever need them. And I do like this flat blue. And... Um, I used this for, again, another Model Railway Scenes product, which is this Portaloo, which is going to go in my permanent way depot area, and it's pretty good blue. And that was just mixed up myself until it came to a sort of lightest shade that I wanted. I couldn't find the exact shade ready-made. In a flat color that I liked so I'm just gonna put these three on the blue tag now so. all right so get my do a shake up like to run a bit low on this one now so I'm gonna to have to get some more of this soon
what I'm hoping for is that by the time I finish these last few here that these this end should be dry which they usually are and then when we can start looking at some wash colors Right, that's the three blue ones done. I'm going to leave the red ones to last so that gives that yellow a little bit longer. And I think it is dry, but I just want to make sure. So, so now we're going to use XF5 flat green. Another new paint. I've got a bell bearing in that one. And that's that one done. Just need a little bit more blue tax. This is why I like my new workstation area because I've got everything I need to straight to hand. Whereas before I'd be search, having to search for everything because I had so much stuff all in different places because I had nowhere to store it all.
obviously I always do tend to try and paint from the paint lid rather than dipping the brush right in the pot because you do not want to dip it and soak all this in paint up, you know up here you just want paint on the end of the brush it works so much better and you start dipping the paint in the brush and then you start getting it run down the down the brush and you end up with top giant sort of like drips of paint going onto what you're trying to paint and it really isn't you know the right way to do it these these like I said these have got lovely ridges on these so it makes it quite nice to get a good straight line there It is hard to, oh, I've only got a tiny little camera so it's really hard to uh, get everything sort of in the camera shot and also I can't actually see the camera without moving to see what, what it's whether I'm actually back here or over here so it's quite hard. Just went over the yellow a little bit there, that's not a problem. What I probably should have done is gone right over the line with the yellow in the first place to make it a little bit easier to do that. need to put a bit more yellow on that one later not a problem there Oh, I knew that was going to happen. It was coming off the blue tack, so. going to do I'm going to leave the the three shell ones for now because I'm going to need to do some touch-ups on those 
So I'll put those aside and we'll uh, I'll do those later on. So next stage is we're going to look at maybe the washes. I'm just going to get myself a nice decent brush for a wash. And let's have a look at what we could do. So I'm going to use a lot of these MIG washes. So got a lot of different ones so I can use so right so we have the, they're all MIG washes so we have the rain mark effects I've got the slimy grime light and the slimy grime dark as well we've got st my standard dark wash I've got fresh engine oil, dark streaking grime, light rust wash, and streaking rust effects. Now, I actually prefer, to be honest, rather than the wa rust washes, I prefer using powders for those, but I'm gonna give those a go anyway. And there are so many different combinations you could use with these I'm, you know i'm just going to do some standard basics just to show you how easy you can just do something quickly you know you don't have to be an expert at washes and painting to do this this is so simple there all right just try to find a decent brush which one i want to use that one i think for now so i'm just going to take the gray one and the dark wash, which is my go-to wash for a lot of prop things. This here has had just the dark wash on it. I'm gonna put a bit of the greens and stuff on the roof. So do that shortly when I've got the next color out. And the one thing you need to have when you're doing these is a bit of kitchen paper ready because um, what I tend to do, or my method of doing it, I chuck it on quite thick, and you think, oh, that's a bit too much. There we go. But now, I'm just gonna move my pot out of the way so I don't knock it over for two seconds. So now I'm just gonna get my paper blot that and this bit's a bit hard to do on camera but I'm going to roll the, the drum on the paper because what I want to do is take most of that off I don't want most of that on there And if I can get it to zoom a bit better, there we go. That looks already pretty decent. Looks like a dirty old weathered drum. And that one, I'm actually happy with that, exactly how that is. And that was how easy it was. It took me, what, 10 seconds to put that wash on and wipe it off. So, I'm going to move on to another wash. Just wipe that brush off. Uh, let's go for slimy grime dark, I think. So, we're going to go with the slimy grime this time.
and obviously what you need to remember is if you want a bit more of a, an effect don't take so much off but if you want less of an effect leave more on you know take more off it's entirely up to you how much effect you want to give it and then I just lost my drum not a problem a bit hard to see it now so I'm just going to stick it over there and then we'll bring those two over to the camera and you can see the difference completely different even though they've got the same paint colour on very very easy brush off and there's other effects that we can do so we're going to carry on now I've got the iron ones now they still a tiny tiny bit damp so ideally I shouldn't really do those yet but actually this is going to play in my favor where they're still slightly damp we can go to the, the powder method I'm just going to quickly show you. So I'm going to bring my little powder station over with my weathering powders in. And what I'm going to do is where there's some still some paint, I'm just going to brush some of this bright rusty colour on. So, just blow most of it off, if I can get that to zoom again, and if you can see that, we've just got a few patches of rust on that barrel, obviously that looks pretty good, I'm quite happy with that one, I don't want the other one to look exactly the same. So maybe, again, what are the other wet ones? No. Right, yeah, I'm going to leave the powders now. And we would look at uh, rain mark effects because I want to use one of this on the blue ones as well because that looks pretty good I, do a I don't know why this focus keeps going off must have knocked a button for autofocus or something I do apologise so we're going to use the rain mark effects now to give this one a weathered really worn Outlook. It's been sat out for quite some time. And again, less is more sometimes. So it's just going to give it a slight tinge of paleness in some of the recesses and edges and on the top like it's just had rain sat on it for ages the whole point is I don't want all these drums to look identical when they're sat to, if there's a few together I want to have lots of different variety in color you can do the same on the blue now So where you can see the difference on how it works with different colours. Just gonna get my paper. Right. 
this one's pretty subtle but again it's not a lot of difference but you can see the difference between that and a standard oil drum hopefully you can see that I think we will go for a jewel on this one I'm going to do one of the greens with this colour then we're going to mix it up a little bit so put some of the rain mark on that one and we dropped it So on next one, I'm going to just do a bit of this light rust wash, see how that comes out. Leave it a little patchy. What it does I'll take a picture of all of these at the end so that it shows up the colours a bit better. And I'll, uh, I'll give you a better view of them all when they're all together. I'll take them off there and put them together. So I'm quite that one's not too bad. Let's go for something different on this one. So I've got some fresh engine oil on here. And what I'm going to try and do... So just giving it a bit of a streaking down like that so that it just looks like something's been dripping down the sides yeah it's a bit big but i could have done it with a smaller brush if i'd wanted and for the last one i'm just going to use because I haven't used this one yet, is the is the dark streaking grime for this one. I'm just going to do the same. Oops, sorry, I haven't mixed that one up very well.
So I just bear with me a minute. So I'm just going to take these, just stick them down here. Just so that you can have a look at them all together and I'll get some proper focusing on that. I think you'll agree that they're pr pretty decent and pretty quick and simple to do. It's taken me, what, 41 minutes to paint eight up and I've still got up these last three to, f to finish of those so pretty easy to do pretty effective looking look good in any depot or work area and very well made piece of items so if you want any get them from model railway scenes and uh thanks for watching my video if you have any questions then please feel free to ask i'm always like comments and uh, questions so thanks and goodbye